Hello. This is the Bible in fewer words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 218. Hosea, chapters 1 through 5. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. I love saying a word I've never said before. Hosea. (laughs) Hosea, can you see? (laughs) <laughs> so Hosea is the first of the minor prophets. Mm-hmm. The last one's Malachi. Then we'll be done with the Old Testament. That is welcomed news to my brain and heart. <laughs> Yeah. So it's kind of in sight. <laughs> Hosea, can you see the end of Old Testament? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. And we can see it. Yeah. But first, just a bit about Hosea. Hosea was one of the earliest to be written. Of the minor prophets. Of the minor prophets. This is happening in the last half of the 8th century BCE. So that's where we're taking up here. And actually, it turns out that the very last king of Israel is named Hosea. Oh, but, but this is not same, him. Same name. Okay. No. And he came just a little bit later before the Assyrians came and conquered Israel in 722 BCE. Okay. So we're in Israel. Before, we've been talking a lot about Judah because we've been dealing a lot with the Babylonian captivity and stuff. So that was later. We're kind of going back in time, (laughs) back to Israel before the Assyrians invaded. Okay, great. Chapter 1. The word of God came to Hosea, saying, Go marry a whore and have children with her. Well, I'd like to be greeted by God (laughs) in that way. (laughs) What do you mean? (laughs) It's just a weird thing to say, that God would say that to Hosea. Go marry a whore. Well, it doesn't say they had any preliminary discussion here. This is verse 1. That's pretty much all it says, is just go marry a whore. And have children with her. Because the people have committed great whoredoms by leaving me. Oh, God is jealous again. Remember we had that thing going on in Ezekiel? Didn't work out too well. (laughs) No. We're kind of doing the same thing, except for this time he's going to have his prophet, Hosea, Mm -hmm. kind of act it out for him to demonstrate, I guess, what the people of Israel are doing. So Hosea married Gomer, and they had a son. I always think of Gomer Pyle. Me too. (laughs) That's not a female. (laughs) Anyway, he married Gomer, and they had a son. They must have had the son together. Yeah. (laughs) So, verse 4, God said to Hosea, Call his name Jezreel, because I'll punish Jehu's descendants for Jehu's killings in Jezreel. We need to review that just a little bit. Yes. Jehu was a king of Israel that lived about 100 years before. Wasn't he the guy who drove crazy like Jehu? <laughs> he did. He drove his chariot like crazy. So drive like Jehu. Okay, so it. listeners, we've gone through this. Oh, yeah. It's episode 150 and 151. And it was taken from Second Kings chapters 9 and 10. So God told Jehu to go kill all these people. And so Jehu did what God told he, him to do. Yes, exactly. He was told to kill everyone among Ahab's family and friends and neighbors who pissed against the wall, is the way that God put it. Okay. And he did that. There was a whole long series of serial killings uh, that involved Jehu killing the descendants of Ahab, also killed Ahab's wife, Jezebel. So here we have God saying, I want you to call him Jezreel. And what does Jezreel have anything to do with Jehu's killings? Ah, Jezreel was a place in Israel where these killings occurred. And Um, it's a reference to what Jehu did in Jezreel. Okay, so he's killing the people of Jezreel. Killing the people that were related to or offspring of Ahab. Okay, so let's remember that place and Jehu by calling your first son Jezreel and how I really liked that he obeyed me when I asked him to kill all these people. That's not what he's saying here. He's saying exactly the opposite. Before, he told him to do that, praised him for doing it, and rewarded him for it. Now he's saying he's going to punish Israel for what? Jehu Jehu did did in Jezreel. (laughs) Okay, he's a little schizophrenic at God. Verse 6. Gomer conceived again and had a daughter. God said to Hosea, Call her name Loruhamah, because I will have no mercy on Israel. Yeah, so I guess that's something that it probably means in Hebrew. Yes, have no mercy yeah. on Israel, because God's mad for some reason that is probably as crazy as the first explanation. Oh, we, we know why here. he's mad, although he hasn't explained it yet. It, it'll come up, I think, later. One thing to point out here is that Gomer had another child. Mm-hmm. She's she, like a prostitute. Gomer uh, was, or the daughter is? Gomer was. Oh, yeah? And so it doesn't say here that Gomer's child here 
is, is Hosea's uh, daughter. Hosea's daughter. <laughs> In fact, it implies that it's not. Before, it says they had a son. Uh -huh. Here it says she has a daughter. After he daughter. marries a whore, doesn't she stop being a whore? No, no, that's the thing that he's really upset about. Oh. Is he married her, and now she's going to play the whore, she's going to be a whore, oh. have lots of lovers and stuff. Okay, and when so, she did that, she's having these illegitimate children. Okay, so Hosea is not happy with her, and God is not happy with her. Oh, he, yeah. 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 I don't know. It's hard to tell about it God. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, verse 8. Gomer had another daughter. We don't know who the father is, but we know who the mother is. Yes. God said to Hosea, call her name Loami. Because you're not my people, and I'm not your God. Okay, God is really speaking weirdly here. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I think that should be any different. But. Chapter 2. God said to Hosea's children, Tell your mother that she's not my wife, and I'm not her husband. Yeah, that's a good parenting. <laughs> Just <laughs> yeah. to tell your children to tell your uh -huh, spouse something. Yeah. Tell her to put away her whoredoms and her adulteries between her breasts. So she's, she's still acting up there. I guess so. Or I will strip her naked and make her die of thirst. I won't have mercy on her children because they are the children of whoredoms. See, he's talking to, to his her kids. children. She's, yes. I want, <laughs> so guys. he's really saying, I won't have mercy on you because you're the children <laughs> of whoredoms. Since your mother has played the harlot and said, I will go after my lovers... I align your path with thorns. She'll seek her lovers, but she won't find them. I'll discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers. She won't get away from me. I'll destroy her fig trees. God loves fig trees. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> she put on earrings and jewels, went after her lovers, and forgot me. So she left. I guess so. Well, good for her. But, verse 14 says, But I'll lure her into the wilderness and say nice things to her. I'll give her vineyards, and she'll sing like she did when she was young. It's kind of romantic, isn't it? Very. He's going to come back, and he's going to uh -huh. kind of forgive her, I think. I don't think so. I don't know. On that day, she'll call me Ishi, husband, instead of Baal. Well, isn't Baal the name of a god? Yeah, that's what this is all about. Oh. Is the Israelites are going after Baal. Oh, yeah. And that's making God jealous. I get it now. I'll take the name of Baal out of her mouth. I'll make a covenant with the beasts, fowls, and creeping things. They'll all lie down safely. And you'll be my wife forever. You'll be faithful to me, and you'll know I'm God. On that day, I'll hear the heavens, and the heavens will hear me. The earth will hear the grain, wine, and oil, and they'll hear Jezreel. And I'll say to the people who are not my people, you are my people. <laughs> <laughs> and my people will say, you are my God. See, right. it all works out nice. Well, I'm I'm actually confused here. Really? So we've got her having a son, and then her having a daughter and another daughter, yeah. and whose father we don't know who they are. Right, yeah. And then Hosea gets mad. So I don't know who's talking. <clears throat> Most of that was God that we just had, right? Like okay. All the, of it oh, was. So but, that's God talking, and he's going to make up with Gomer. Yeah. Well. And be nice to her now. Uh-huh, yes. So I don't see where the transition happens, God said to Jose's children. He's talking bad about the mom mm -hmm. to the children. It's, it's all bad there. But then it all changes in verse 14. And he says, but I'm going to make her love me again. Uh, she'll sing like she used to sing, and everything's going to be good. So I was confused because I thought it was Gomer talking to his kids like that. No, no. God. He's, God is the one saying. But he's saying, but oh, I'm going to be nice to her, your mother. Okay. But then he switches it to, you'll be my wife forever. You know, so the pronouns are the usual problem with them. Yes. <laughs> All right, chapter three. God said to me, go have sex with an adulteress who has a lover. And so God is talking to Hosea. Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this puzzles people, and it puzzles me. It sounds to me, if this is just a story, then it sounds like he's taking another adulteress, right? Yes. God told him to do it in... Chapter 1. Now it sounds like he's telling him to do it again in chapter 3 with a new wife. Yeah. So he has two wives, I guess. And they're both adulteresses or prostitutes. Yeah. But the majority of the biblical scholars mm -hmm. think that it's the same wife. Oh, it's the same and wife. he's talking about Gomer again. Oh, my God. I'm not convinced, but that's what a lot of people say. All right. So verse 2. So I bought a woman for 15 pieces of silver and a homer and a half of barley. I said to her, 
You'll be with me for many days, and while you are, don't play the harlot. You won't have sex with another man. You'll have sex with me. For Israel will be without a king for many days. Then, in the latter days, Israel will return to God with David as their king, and they'll fear God and his goodness. Sounds like a That's not gonna happen. comforting relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, David, I guess David's coming back or something. Uh-huh. Yeah, because David's been dead for a few centuries now. Yeah. Okay, chapter 4. Hear the word of God, you people of Israel. God has a controversy with you because of your swearing, lying, killing, stealing, and adultery. Therefore, the land will mourn, and the beasts, birds, and fish will die. You'll fall in the day, the prophet will fall in the night, and I'll destroy your mother. Again, crazy talk. Yeah. The people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you. Since you have forgotten God's laws, I'll forget your children. They won't have enough to eat, and they'll commit whoredom. They're all drinking wine and going a-whoring in the spirit of whoredoms. They're sacrificing on top of mountains and burning incense on hills under trees. Therefore, your daughters will commit whoredom, and your spouses will commit adultery. But you, Israel, are playing the harlot. Your drink is sour, and you commit whoredom continually. Okay, we need to start talking about something else here. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of whoredom going on. Yeah. Okay, so chapter 5. Ephraim, you have committed whoredom, and Israel is defiled. Whenever Hosea talks about Ephraim, Mm -hmm. just another name for Israel. Okay. Ephraim, you have committed whoredom, and Israel is defiled. The spirit of whoredom is in the midst of them. They'll seek God, but they won't find him. He's hiding from them. They have begotten strange children. Ephraim will be desolate. I will pour my wrath on them like water. Therefore, I'll be like a moth to Ephraim, and unto Judah, I'll be rottenness. Yeah, so this like a moth to Ephraim. I noticed that in the Revised Standard Version, it Mm -hmm. says it'll be like a maggot. It's going to eat their dead bodies. Who knows? And the last verse... 14. I'll be like a lion to Ephraim and Judah. I'll tear them to pieces until they acknowledge my face and seek me early. Yeah, if he waits too long. <laughs> sorry, buddy. <laughs> send, send the lions on you. <laughs> okay, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This was weird. Yeah, so that's the first half. We'll do the second half next time. So if any of our listeners are confused, just go go to the Skeptic's Annotated Bible and read this for yourself. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can make more out of it than I could. I try to put some notes at the bottom of the text to explain it. <laughs> it's pretty clear, actually. You know, God's mad at Israel for being unfaithful to him. Mm-hmm. And he's making his prophet. Live his... through that. Live, yeah, live right, it. kind of experience it for him so that he'll understand how God feels. It's like a living play. Exactly, Yeah. A real-life play. Like, you go marry a whore, and you'll see how my people have deserted me and been whores to other gods. Yeah, it's very similar to what happened in Ezekiel, remember? Yes. God would have him act out things. Okay, make this little town here and okay. made out of clay. And you lay in the field. Lay on your side for 430 <laughs> days. And... <laughs> yes, yeah. that was crazy. Yeah. All and right, then I they'll kill your wife, right? Uh huh. So a lot of times God's doing these metaphors, but just getting carried away with them. He wants them acted out in real life. Yeah. That's what he's doing here. Uh huh. It's like uh, when people do uh, the crucifixion of Jesus. You mean in it, the Philippines? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like that. <laughs> it is like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, again, thanks, Steve. Uh-huh. And listeners, thanks for staying with us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.